Hey, Dave Elich here, and welcome to my edition of Behind the Sleeves with Vic Firth. We're gonna be talking about what I go over when I work with some of the best drummers in the world on a daily basis, getting them to use their body in a healthy, natural way so they can play as long as they want and they don't run into any physical or mental issues down the road. There was no So I've been playing Vic Firth since day one, since I was nine. Uh, and I talked about this when I did a video for Vic Firth years ago. And I think a lot of people thought it was funny. Like I would, I said I would try other brands of sticks and like the tips didn't make sense and the tapers are weird. Even when I was like nine, I was like, why would you want to play this? Vic Firth, they just got it right. Uh, it's just the perfect combination of a nice, steady, even taper and this acorn tip, this is a straight up 5B by the way. This is my go-to stick and has been for a long time. And I play a lot of different styles of music, uh, you know, everything from metal to pop to weird improvised noise music. And I use the 5B on pretty much everything. So it just, it's a great workhorse stick. And if I need to have more firepower, if I'm playing with something really heavy, uh, I upgrade to the rock here. Uh, and the thing I like about the rock, as opposed to like a 2B, is the rock still has a similar taper to a 5B. It's got that long, gradual taper. So even though it's a huge stick, it doesn't feel clubby and heavy to me like a 2B is. So you kind of get the best of both worlds and all this extra power and energy without having to sacrifice any weight or, or balance issues or anything. So. For me, when I find the right stick, I don't have to think about anything. I'm just playing and everything just comes out naturally. And if I'm playing the stick that doesn't work for me, it's like, oh, I have to think about the fact that I'm playing. So when you grab sticks, if you're able to just play and express yourself and not think about the stick, that's the one you want to use. So what's in my stick bag? Uh, this is my rework upcycled carrier stick bag here. Um, let's see what's in here. So got a bunch of rocks. Uh, we got some five B's. SD 12 swizzle G's. These I've had these forever. These are such a great utilitarian stick. I can't tell you guys how much I use these on film scores if I'm doing like crazy big tom things or cymbal swells and then I have to turn it around and play some snare drum thing or something. They're great live too for the same reason. Uh, I always have a few sets of these lying around. Um, got a super old school, old logo, American Custom, TS Custom General, fluffy soft mallets for cymbal rolls. Always good to have those. Some roots. These are great for you know low volume setting in the studio or live. And, uh, and then these, I think these were some proto, yeah, these were like some old school prototypes I got a few years ago that are really, really, really heavy. So sometimes they feel good to warm up a little bit. Uh, I just have them in here for fun. So yeah, that's my stick bag.
So when we're talking about playing with power and longevity, this really comes down to how you're using your body first. We can talk about your grip, you know, your posture, how you're playing the pedals, all this technique oriented stuff. And a lot of people start with that. But the problem is if you're, you know, pulling your head back and down, you're slouching, uh, you're tight, you're holding tension, none of that other stuff matters. And that's where a lot of people get stuck and keep ramming their head against the wall. And they're like, I don't know what's wrong. I can't, you know, because they're, they're glossing over the first step, which should be paying attention to the body and using the body in a universal way. So this is something that I've done naturally. Maybe it's just the way my brain works, but I've thought about how people use their body in different forms of physical exercise or movement, dancing, football, basketball, soccer, Muay Thai, like what, whatever it is. And you pay attention to people who do these things at a very high level and you start to see a constellation of healthy use and good movement. Uh, in addition to studying with the Alexander Technique teachers in, in Los Angeles, uh, it's I figured out it's very similar to what I've been doing naturally myself for a few years. There's a large amount of overlap there. So I highly encourage people to check out Alexander Technique. It, it's all about getting back to being a three-year-old. When you watch a three-year-old, they go to pick something up, they squat, they lead with their head. Everything is natural. It's super important to understand that you have a normal and a natural. And just because something you do is normal for you, that certainly does not mean it's natural. So one of my favorite things about Alexander Technique is a concept called end gaining. So end gaining is where you're so focused on the end goal of what you're trying to achieve that you misuse your use of your body in order to achieve that. So the example I always use is some guy at the gym with dumbbells that are way too heavy and he's like kipping back and forth to, to curl them uh, because he's like, I'm gonna curl these no matter what and totally misusing his body instead of using the right amount of weight, focusing on your form, focusing on how you're going to achieve that goal and then everything should naturally take care of itself. Uh, this is easy in theory, but it's, it's really difficult to undo these bad habits and replace them with healthy, natural uh, habits like you would have when you're a, a child. So that's what this is all about. So we're not going to be focusing necessarily on like hardcore technique stuff. Uh, it's going to be more elemental use of the body. So when you want to start diving into having a healthy use of your body and mind, the first way to do that that I find is the easiest is mindfulness meditation. So I've been practicing mindfulness meditation for over 10 years, uh, you know, pretty much every day. And the benefits are vast. And there's a saying, if you don't have 10 minutes, you know, you need two hours. So 10 minutes every day, it's a great way to check in with yourself and see how you're feeling. Sometimes you sit down, it goes by super quickly. Sometimes it feels like it takes hours. And you can use that when you go out into the world and, uh, and go, okay, this is how I'm feeling. How am I going to interact with people and things? It's a great way to have like a baseline before you start your day. So with what we're talking about today, we're focusing on tension in the body. And so much of what we do as drummers is dependent on physical movement. And you can't have a healthy amount of physical movement if you're holding tension in your body somewhere. So I encourage you to get like a cushion or sit on a chair. Uh, don't sit on the ground because it'll your butt will be below your knees. It'll be really uncomfortable. I'm sitting on a meditation bench, uh, which are fantastic. A little cushion's great. And just sit down, you know, you don't need to be full lotus, just cross-legged's fine, whatever's comfortable. And just sit down and, and, and close your eyes and just be mindful of how your body feels. Like this isn't about shutting off your brain. That's not the point. It's just about really paying attention to what's going on in your body. So much of what's happening, so much of the poor use that everyone has is automatic and unconscious. So it's about making the unconscious conscious. And if you are end gaining constantly, which a lot of us are, uh, in order to end gain, you need to become numb to your body in order to do that. 
So for instance, if you're playing a song that's really fast, you're like, okay, I just got to get through this chorus. I remember, you know, you're just like muscling it out. And then when you start doing that, you get really tight and you're like, oh, this hurts. And then after a while, you just become numb to that and you ingrain that unhealthy movement pattern. So you don't even notice it anymore. So when you sit down here, you have a clear slate and you just want to pay attention to how the body feels. The most common places people hold tension are the back of their neck, the sides of their neck, like their traps, uh, their shoulders, and their jaw, and their stomach. So just take a second, and, you know, a few minutes and just scan your body. Start with the top of your head, your eyelids, your ears, your jaw, your tongue, your throat, and move your way down and take your time and you'll be surprised what you notice in your body. You may like notice sometimes your left shoulder comes up. And this brings me to my next point, which once you realize you're holding tension, being able to release that tension is not so easy. Just because you understand that it's there now, wherever it is, it's not like, oh, okay, I'll just let that go. Sometimes people don't know how to do it. In fact, most of the time they don't know how to release tension. It's one of the things I help people out with. So for instance, if your shoulders are tight, you can do this, hunch up on purpose and then relax. And so you go, okay, that's all I'm doing. I'm just letting them down. So many times when I tell people to relax the body part, they like shake it out. And that's not what we want to do because then that confuses the nervous system. And it, it's much more of a fine, subtle release. So it's a lot like if you're going to sleep and you're in bed and at night and your head's on the pillow and you notice that you're digging your head back into the pillow. And they're like, why am I doing that? That doesn't make any sense. And then you just relax. It's, it's that. It's a very subtle thing. So wherever you feel tension in your body, try to do that first. And that will set the stage so you can have healthy use while you're playing the instrument. One of the most important things that we can do as drummers is warm up properly. And I've never seen anyone talk about this in a way that makes sense. And it took me a long time and a lot of years on the road to figure this out myself. And it's so simple. So the way everyone talks about warming up usually is you get a practice pad and you sit backstage for a half an hour or five minutes, like a lot of people do, and just hit a pad and do paradiddles and whatever. And then you go out on stage and slam. And that's not a great way to warm up your hands, let alone your entire body. So I don't know, maybe like 2015 or something, I was out on the road with Anti-Mask and I was at the gym, I was home for a second and I was skipping rope. And I realized, why am I not doing this on the road? I can just throw this in my bag and do this before shows. And the thing is, if you're jumping up and down, twisting the rope, that warms up your whole body. And for me, I know some of you struggle with this as well. I just have naturally bad circulation. So a lot of times I'd walk out on stage after warming up and my hands might be a little bit warm, but my feet would be like freezing. So bring a jump rope on stage, set a timer on your phone, skip rope for one minute, take a break for 30 seconds, do five to eight sets of that, and you can augment that however it works for you. Throw the jump rope down, walk on stage. When you sit down to play the first song, it should feel like you're playing the third song. There isn't that like stiff, blocky, like settling in thing anymore because your whole body is actually warm. I can't tell you how many people I've worked with who go out on the road and come back and go, oh my God, that jump rope thing before shows is a total game changer. So give it a shot, it's huge. So we're not going to have time today to go deeply into addressing grip. Uh, I also have an instructional course for that if you want to check that out on my website. Uh, so what we can talk about today is just how to zoom out and approach this in a more universal macro way. So what I mean by that is if you just let your arms hang down at your sides, just like floating in the breeze, and then you let's say with the right hand, you curl your fingers a little bit, like you pretend like you're holding like a briefcase. 
So it's this kind of a shape. And then you just drop the stick right in there. And then you bring your hand up. So this would be French grip. So the point here is we're not going to get into the nuts and bolts of this grip stuff. But the point here is that you're holding the stick with your entire hand, not the back, not the front, not the middle. It's the same way you grip a tennis racket or a lance or a baseball bat or anything. Again, it's universal. So let's not worry so much about the grip right now, but just it's your whole hand holding the stick loosely, whether you're French or German. That is so important. I would much rather have you guys holding the sticks like baseball bats and being super loose and re relaxed than having like a, a sort of perfect grip, even though that doesn't even exist, and being tight. Tension is, is the enemy of, of having healthy movement in your body. Uh, and people love to say that all the time. I see people saying that on Instagram all day, but they don't really know what that means because they aren't aware that they're still holding a lot of tension in their body. So the next step, once you get used to doing this, is especially when you're playing with power, like I am in these uh, playing segments in this video, a lot of people end gain by when they go to hit and when they make contact, they tighten up. So it's counterintuitive uh, and it's a bit of a paradox in that when the harder you hit, when you make contact with the instrument, you release. So it's the same way you punch someone in the face. You don't hit them and go, no, you relax on, on impact and, and all the energy goes into the drum or wherever your, your movement is going. So uh, if I'm going to hit this thing while being tight, you can see how my whole body seizes up and the drum gets choked, as opposed to me relaxing when I hit. You, it sounds totally different. And you can see how my body's just completely at ease. So again, these sort of macro things I want you guys to think about are just how relaxed can I possibly be? And when I'm making contact with these surfaces of the instrument, whatever they are, ride cymbal, hat, snare, kick drum, am I relaxing upon impact? That is extremely important. And you may be shocked how much you're not doing that. I had a friend going on tour with a uh, guitar player a few years ago, and he was used to playing sort of Silver Lake hipster, uh, you know, mustache, plaid shirt, kind of real low volume music. And this was like balls to the wall rock and roll. And so he was like, how oh, I need to get more power and more speed. So his first inclination was to switch to a smaller stick, like a 7A, and because he thought he could move his hands faster that way. And I called him up. I was like, dude, that's the complete opposite of what you want to do. You want to use a larger stick so that the stick can do all of the work for you. It's, it seems like a lot in the beginning to get used to all the extra mass. But if you switch down to a smaller stick, it's like trying to hit a home run with like a wiffle ball bat. Like there's no weight being thrown around. So I use uh, my Vic Firth uh, signature 5Bs. They're just straight up 5Bs. Uh, heavyweight with my Dave Smash Hulk on them. And I use those for pretty much everything. Uh, but when I want to do Daughters of Mara stuff or, or something heavy, uh, I switch to rocks. And rocks are, are large sticks. And so the thing that's amazing about these sticks uh, is tonally, it's a completely different ball game. Like you just cannot get the drums to open up in a way with a smaller stick that you can with these larger sticks. So if I um, take like the five, the five B, and do a rim shot here versus the rock, <laughs> it's a completely different ball game. Uh, and that same thing goes for toms and cymbals and everything. So when you're like washing on cymbals, you just have to do so much less. So if you're playing with power. Try a bigger stick. Let the stick do all the work for you. Finally, just like warming up, a lot of people don't understand how to cool down after shows. And this is extremely important, especially if you're on the road playing hard hitting shows every night. Your body needs all the help it can get to recover. 
Uh, and that includes sleep, which a lot of people don't do very well on the road. Uh, so what we're talking about is when you watch a pitcher get off the mound, what's the first thing they do? They wrap his whole arm in ice. Uh, and what do a lot of people do when they get off stage? They, you know, drink a six pack and eat a pizza. And then they get in the bunk and fall asleep and do that for months and their body gets all messed up. So when you come off the stage, you need to get one of those beer tubs, fill it with ice water, not a crazy amount of ice, you know, just a little bit of ice water, dunk your arms in the ice water, 30 seconds to a minute at the most, and do that on and off, I don't know, four or five times. And that cold water will uh, impact blood flow, white blood cells, helps inflammation, and it helps your recovery exponentially. So between the warming up and the cooling down properly, that will give you a massive amount of longevity that you wouldn't have otherwise. Change your number, change your name. Walk a thousand miles to end up where you started from. My blood is running through your veins. I'd slit my wrists if it would free you from the damage I've done. Do as I say. One piece of advice that would have the biggest impact on a brand new drummer would be just have fun. I have people study with me who are older, maybe in their 50s or 60s, they've never played drums before, they just wanna play. And I'm not like overloading them with technique and rudiments, it's just like, let's play along to this Beatles song or whatever music they like, 
back in black, whatever, something easy and just like ride the wave and have fun. I mean, that's why we're all doing this anyway. So just have a good time. When I am away from the drums or I'm taking a break, I find it rejuvenating to dive into nature. Uh, I have a house up in Portland. I go up to Portland and go on hikes and just be out in the wilderness. I find that really recharging. I also am super into art. So I'll go to museums, watch documentaries, just get out of music and drumming and get inspiration from other areas of life. Drummers, especially drummers, have a tendency to just have these blinders on and only worry about drummy stuff. And I think if you do that, you're extremely limited on what you're gonna do creatively. So expose yourself to all sorts of other things. There's so much great stuff out there. Just read a book, watch a documentary, go see some art, go just explore, see what happens. So a lot of people say, oh, I have a dominant side. I need to make my weaker side even with my stronger side. And I think this is just a huge waste of time. Drummers, for some reason, are so preoccupied with being ambidextrous. And that's just not the point of playing drums. This isn't like some puzzle to solve so you can be like equally as good on the left side as the right. So you can play what like some crazy thing with your feet. It's just like it's not like a riddle or a puzzle to be solved. It's a creative instrument that you're using to serve the music. So don't worry about making your weak side as equally strong as your dominant side. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you can express yourself fully. When I'm playing music, whether it's in the studio or live, the only thing I'm focusing on is how can I best serve the song? So there have been times when I've just completely laid out in sections because I think that's what serves the song the most. Or I've had certain circumstances where like the artist is like going, play more, play more. And uh, I don't I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to screw the song up. So I'm usually listening to the vocals if there's vocals in the music and just trying to support them uh, the best way that I can. And sometimes that's not playing at all or staying out of the way. Uh, and I will let people tell me to play more if they want that. So I just let the music guide me.
Thank you guys so much for tuning into my edition of Vic First Behind the Sleeves. If you want to dive deeper with some of these concepts, be sure to go to davielich.com and check out my instructional course, Getting Out of Your Own Way. If you want to reach out to me, Instagram's the best way, at Dave Elich. I'd love to hear from you guys and take care.